Hello and welcome to Access Chat. We're delighted to be joined today by Rajan Nair. Rajan is uh, a photojournalist and is based in India and is working on a number of community-based projects. So Rajan, welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and the work that you are doing? Okay. Um, uh, first of all, uh, thanks a lot for inviting me to the show. And uh, uh, I'm really, uh, really very grateful uh, talking to you all. Uh, I might, I'm, 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 I'm basically from uh, born and brought up in Bombay. And uh, it was, uh, uh, you know, it was a small incident that happened in my life, which I went on, uh, I got involved into the deaf community and later on the, uh, the cancer uh, affected children. Uh, way back in, uh, in the late 90s, uh, I had a hearing problem. So then I showed to an ENT uh, doctor, he said is that I'll have to do some surgery. And if I don't do the surgery, I might become completely deaf. So I, uh, I did a surgery in the year 2000. And uh, unfortunately, that sur my ear surgery was not uh, successful to me. What they did is that they, they, they had removed my uh, middle ear, middle bone, and uh, they had fixed a, trans uh, 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 a, a, a sort of a uh, implant they did in my ear. But it wasn't successful. And to add to my problem, I got tinnitus also. Uh, due to this, uh, I continued struggling uh, with my hearing. I had to give up my business, small business. And then what am I going to do? So what I did is that I did a course in journalism. Uh, at the same time, I did a course in photography. And uh, the, the, the first uh, freelance, uh, I started working as a freelance photojournalist uh, come journalist. And the first breakthrough I got was Guardian uh, UK. I started contributing articles to uh, them for around about a year or two. At the same time, I started clicking, doing a lot of street photographies and posting it in the social media. So I started getting more recognition in my photography. So uh, here is a guy who didn't have any inclination uh, towards photography when I was in school or college. And all of a sudden, uh, I find myself uh, uh, into the world of photography and people recognizing me about my photography and all. So I, what could be the reason? Is it so that, uh, that I, due to my loss of hearing from my right ear uh, and uh, utilization of my eye and hand uh, more in seeing things, had led me to become a good photographer. So perhaps that was the answer which I got it. So I felt I should share my uh, photography skill to the deaf community because I believe is that, uh, you know, uh, they, they are dependent on their eye and their hand uh, for communication. Uh, so I felt is that photography is all about coordination between eye and hand. So they could become a good photographer. I started taking uh, free photography lessons uh, during Saturdays, uh, visiting around about uh, 10, uh, 10 kilometers away from my home, uh, carrying a uh, load of uh, cameras on my, on my back. I, I, you know, looking at my work, uh, I got some nine to 10 cameras uh, uh, donated by a few friends who came together in Sydney. And one of the lady was flying to uh, India and she bought all the camera uh, uh, and gifted to me, which I could, uh, which was very helpful for me to use it in my workshop. So I started weekend, started taking classes for the deaf community. Later on, I was not able to, you know, I continued for a couple of years. It was very difficult, you know, taking classes, bearing expenses of travel, food. Then we used to arrange for outdoor also. There again, uh, you know, it, we had a lot of difficulties. Uh, the, there is not much of a concession in traveling uh, in India for the handicaps. And uh, we built up a wonderful group of uh, deaf uh, photographers. I'm very proud to say as of today, uh, I, I've been in this uh, teaching them from last uh, more than 10 years. And I'm proud to say there are 10, uh, uh, 10 of my students are working as a professional photographer. Uh, uh, we, we, yeah, we are in touch with each other. Then in 2014, I got involved with the, with the cancer kit. Because I felt is that, uh, you know, uh, treatment to cancer kid, you know, uh, I, I mean, they are taking care only of, about the physical aspect. There is a lot of uh, pain uh, and suffering uh, when a cancer kid goes through thermo, th thermo, chemotherapy, radiation, surgery and all. So, but what about the mental, uh, mental health care? 
so i felt if you give them something you know something involve them in some some sort of a creativity it's going to make them happy a better frame of mind maybe it can help them battle the uh, the cancer as well or cancer they can help them battle the cancer uh, also in a better way so uh, i continued with the in 2014 i i added uh, the cancer children into my group then thereafter i got invited in different part of uh, india i went to faridabad i went to goa and in different places i did photo workshop uh, in 2016 i was given an award by the government uh, uh, for for my for my work and then later on uh, i was selected as one of the mumbai heroes also in 2016 so and lately in the during the lockdown period what i did is that most of the children were very scary about uh, you know covid you know for, uh, uh, my interaction with my students is not uh, like a sir and a teacher uh, sir uh, like a sir and a student relationship i am more of a mentor uh, as a guide but more of a friend to them so even uh, uh, i i i try to get them involved in their joys in their uh, happiness in their sufferings also i listen to their problem i come out with some solution to them so that kind of a relation which i have got it and i felt is that this uh, 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 lockdown was having a very serious mental effect on the children especially the cancer kid so i told them to get involved in uh, um, uh, in the creativity whether it is drawing or whether it is sketching also they can't go out so not much of a photography so i started a group in instagram separate account for the cancer kid known as cancer art project and for the deaf i started uh, enable photography should i continue right. Yeah. So, so I think uh, I think Deborah has a question. No. No, no, you don't. Mm. Sorry. I, I, I mean, I'm... no, but 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 I will ask a question. Um, I I really appreciate you took this opportunity. Your life, this um, you know, life gave you a sort of lemons, and you made with it, and through your own experience of being losing hearing, you use that. to help others. And so yes, yes. I yes, and so it, have you, is it are you focusing on children, um adults or a combination of um you know people. Yeah. I mean uh, see bulk of my you're all people. Is it, the, yeah, have you completed? Can I answer? Yeah. Yes, see, I, I apologize. Yes. yeah i started uh, you know teaching in the school when the when, when the students were quite small you know around about 14 15 18 15 years now those students have become adult so since we all we are continuing with the relationship whereas uh, in the uh, in the in case of cancer children i i i teach uh, photography in one of the premier uh, cancer hospital in india that is tata memorial hospital okay so i am allowed to take photography every alternate week in the pediatric ward so the most of the most of the most of, most of them are kids not not adult but in some cases what i help their fathers also uh, in in becoming a photographer the, uh, the 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 cancer children's father also so but bulk of my most of the students in cancer group are children whereas in the uh, whereas in the uh, among the deaf group uh, most of them are above 18 but not not uh, but not above 22 or 23 So so do you take to, when you say you're taking photos um are you and you're taking photos in the pediatric ward are you taking photos of the individuals i mean i haven't seen the photos so um how, how do you decide what photos to take yeah basically my classes you know when i take my class uh, you know basically Uh, i teach them what are the what is the, the operational part what are the main features of a camera the basic photography uh, photography i teach them see the my challenge uh, when i'm taking classes with the children is to see that uh, you know they get involved uh, in my uh, in my they give attention to me they get involved it is very difficult to get the grab the attention of the small kids right. yeah and you have to yeah. more entertain the small kids yeah yeah right. i have to you know i i have to come to their level uh as a, i mean myself acting as a kid and uh, you know try to gel with them try to keep their attention alive try to motivate them try to give a pep talk 
and it's it, it's really difficult because they get distracted by all sort of things and this classes is conducted in a pediatric ward so there is always lot of patient moving around lot of disturbance everything is there but at any given time i have around about uh, 20 15 to 20 kids some of them are about 10 some are below 10 below 10 they create a big nuisance they they don't know anything about photography they are just out uh, you know to have some good fun uh, you know roaming about and, uh, you know disturbing me they're trying to control them also at the same time but i don't like to tell them to leave the place but i try to control them and uh, out of this 15 i at the end of the classes the, the ch children who come to me and take my uh, my my cell number shows that they want to continue i don't expect everybody to get involved in my photography and i i insist that you don't not necessarily that you have to really uh, be interested only in photography you can be good in sketching you can be good in drawing most of them are good artists you you might be a good dancer you might be good in listening and all so i encourage them what they want to be some of them genuinely are interested in photography then the continuity is there i take them in my group and uh, as and when uh, I get the time, uh, I teach them online uh, through videos and everything and all. Now, when it comes to outdoor photography, I mean, we, we try to kill, uh, we, we try basically to take street photography. And uh, then we go near to the sea. We, I, I mean, I tell them, I tell the students, you, you choose what is going to be the subject of your liking and you take the photos. Later on, I will judge what is the photo, how is the photo then. So I leave it to the children. I don't give them any, I don't tell them you have to shoot this, you have to shoot that, you have to shoot this and all. I leave it to them and uh, the, let them shoot. Then later on, I give my judgment on the photos. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, <clears> to <throat> I'm gonna step in here so that um, we can ask you some questions. So, uh, so what you're doing is you're exposing these children, many that are deaf or hard of hearing, to different career options that they could have in the arts. So they could be photojournalists, they could sketch. You're just introducing them to different career options that they could be successful in in the future, right? Right. Right, right, right. which is a see, good idea because we often don't see, we don't see that happen. So you're just, you're broadening the horizons that they could be and how they could contribute in the world as they grow up, which is pretty cool. Yes, yes, right, right. Uh, and, and, also helping um, the mental well-being of young cancer patients. Yes. So yes. Again, this is this is more about the, you know, the the photography for them is a focus to help them cope with the stress that they're going through during treatment. I mean, I've, I've seen your photos on on Instagram. I'm a big Instagram fan. They're, they're beautiful. Thank you. Um, and, and also your taking doing reportage on street scenes and there are people there with with disabilities how is this funded because you said that it's expensive to travel and, and all of this are you are you raising funds as a charity or you have, do you have um donors how do you support yourself to to support others uh, i'll tell you the unique uh, selling point of my whole project is that it is not funded by anyone uh, it's a more of a self-funding. Uh, it's more of a support from my wife. She's a working. Uh, she's working. It's more of a support. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, I mean, I get more of a. Uh, I mean, funding is a major problem. No, 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 no doubt about it. But then I am not charging anything from my uh, for my uh, uh, classes. It is totally free. I I can't think about charging for anything from my from uh, from the from the deaf or from the children also. I was funded uh, I, uh, twice. Uh, somebody else took an initiative, uh, uh, crowdfunding they did. I got twice. In my 11 years, I got, uh, I got a certain amount uh, uh, from two efforts of uh, crowdfunding. I bought some few cameras and all. Some I, keep, I kept it for my travel expenses, my outdoor expenses and all. Other than that, uh, earlier I used to get writing assignment then that money was coming but lately the i mean I, I mean the writing assignment is not not there not very much there uh, so the funding is basically is my own money okay yeah i mean you you i am not no no i have not started a ngo uh, i no. did think about starting an ngo but then i felt is that i didn't own a place i don't have a place i am a small guy 
uh, it's a one man show so i didn't uh, i did make an effort to get some places but i couldn't get i'm still making effort uh, and uh, ngos because i felt is that i uh, let me see as an individual how much i can contribute how much maximum benefit uh, you know i can give to this kid and uh, i always had a apprehension that if i started an ngo perhaps i would be more involved in in uh, you know in the admin administration part in building up a structure or may and maybe running after donation so i, I felt i will keep my uh, my activities limited but more effective okay and and one thing i want to prove is that one can do quite a lot if Uh, the intention is there if the will is there even without money also and it can be quite effective also <laughs> so antonio has a question yeah. so uh, so you are you, you you are trying to avoid bureaucracy while doing your work as much as you can uh, yeah. so i would like you to describe us your week you know um, where you go uh, how you take the pictures uh, how you uh, and a little bit of the creative process behind it you know Yeah, 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 right. Well, I mean, after the lockdown, we are all under home arrest. Uh, so, I mean, uh, the, all the uh, all the only connection which I have with uh, uh, with my student is uh, through WhatsApp, uh, through video calls. They keep on every 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 day. I get lot of uh, sketching, drawing, photos from my cancer kit, uh, then from my deaf student. so almost half the day you know during the lockdown period it is like in the morning i will see i will make some selections uh, of the photos what has to be posted i have a long list of uh, waiting list of photos to be posted then i have to post it in uh, uh, enable photography which is for the deaf and disabled then thereafter then i will have to take the photos of the cancer children then i have to open cancer art project in instagram feed in my pa pa i mean uh, password uh, you know these are all uh, you know time consuming process then again i have to post in cancer uh, art uh, then i have to uh, post it share it with face uh, with facebook uh, then i have a twitter account where I, again i have to disconnect my personal account get it to cancer art project post their uh, photos my half the day is gone in that then later on in the in the afternoon i'll be chatting with some of the some of the kids about the what, what they intend to send tomorrow exchanging of ideas uh, what what they what subject they have to choose everything and also almost the whole day is gone uh, before lo before lockdown it was like uh, uh, every, once in a week i have to go to the hospital and take uh, my photo classes and then uh, we can't afford to go have every day you know go out for, uh, go for outdoor uh, you know arranging uh, for an outdoor program is not a not a easy thing i'll have to take the permission uh, from the kids parents then i have to uh, see if there are how many kids are willing to come uh, in a logistic uh, planning have to be done everything and all maybe maybe two or two times in a month we we go out okay yeah uh, and i i'm interested because you've created a a, a you you've got at least 10 people working as um as professional 10 people working that you've trained that are now professional photographers yes do they help feed back into the community as well is that something that that you might yeah Yeah. yeah all the all, all this uh, deaf photographers are part of my group which i interact almost on a daily basis uh, with them and uh, I, uh, and uh, they some of them are uh, uh, you know uh, working in a photo agency uh, you know they they are working in a photo agency some of them have started as a professional photographers uh, they do small small assignment like parties uh, some of them are working under uh, as an assistant uh, to the main photographer wedding photographers and all so uh, and but at the same time we are in touch with each other you know the the, the photos which they share is the photos which they take personally they uh, like uh, a good landscape uh, a passing cloud or maybe a street photographies and all they they send it to me and i do the posting they have their own individual account also at the same time they post it in their individual account and they share it with me so i do posting in enable photography so i the the, the basic idea is to lead the give them a large covering uh, coverage you know to see that uh, you know i i always felt is that uh, uh, as a society as a world 
you know, we are not giving as much attention that is required for the kids. And for the and especially for the deaf uh, for the deaf community, you know what I am trying uh, for the deaf community is to is to see that you know right now I I believe there is two world. One is a deaf community world and one is a mainstream world. I try to bring in both together. I think as long as the deaf don't come into the mainstream, it is not going to help you help them much uh, much. Uh, we in India we are, uh, basically. Uh, there are, uh, you know, we are, uh, uh, sign language is not taught in uh, uh, in schools and colleges, so that's a basic problem. You know, uh, uh, there are uh, very few non-deaf people who know sign languages. You know, so we are trying at the moment. There is a there is a campaign that is going on among the deaf community uh, is to include uh, uh, sign language as a twenty third official language of India. You know, so. Uh, so helping them, you know, uh, uh, is to come to the mainstream. Uh, I, 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 I believe that people are going to judge you with your work. Don't worry, you're not able to communicate. Uh, you will have some problems about marketing. But there are a lot of good people who want to do something for the disabled. They come to me, Rajan, uh, uh, how can I help you? What I say is that, okay, I, I, need, I need help from you, uh, which is going to be solid, which is going to be concrete. Just give them some job. Whenever you need a photographer, you know, you tell me, <coughs> or here are few or few names of my students. Just give them small, small jobs. You know, give them a chance, give them an opportunity, so they can come up. And I think this idea is much more acceptable to a lot of people also. So this is how we go about. But still, there is a lot of uh, struggle uh, for the deaf community in getting job, uh, in getting a life partner. Uh, communication is still a major problem here. And uh, let me tell you, most of the deaf com deaf uh, students I find they themselves are not very conversant with sign languages. Also. Okay, so yeah. so um, one of the things that we see in the, the 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 global north is that that there is a signing community and then there is a non-signing deaf community, um, and the non-signing deaf community are quite often quite keen to adopt technology um, and there's quite a lot of tech on mobile phones like captions and, and so on that whilst not perfect can be helpful. Um, uh, are your students taking advantage or are aware of some of the technologies that are available for, for free on, on mobile phones? Yes, yes. I, I mean, they, I mean, they are far ahead as far as technology is concerned. They are much more savvy. Uh, you know, they know about Zoom. They know everything. All the, you know, it, it's a big hit among the youth. You know, and they are also a part of the youth uh, community. So they are quite savvy about the technology. And uh, you know, I get to hear new new technology from my students, from my deaf students, and they are really very good about it. They are very good about it. Yeah. yeah. So. so what would what would your ideal outcome be if you were to um you know if, if you were to grow your your photography what would what would you like to achieve uh, finding a path into employment for people funding to 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 teach uh more classes or to expand you are talking about my personal ambition, future ambition. Yes, yes. for your personal uh, ambition. No, my you. my. See, uh, I mean, uh, now uh, uh, it's Bombay is a very expensive, uh, you know, uh, uh, city. Uh, even to hire a small place uh, to pay rent and all is going to be, you know, quite high. Uh, so right now, what we do is that we have an open sky class. Like we go outdoor. Uh, I'll be standing in, in wherever I have to explain to them in theory, uh, practical and all. I'll be, we, 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 we get together in a street corner. You'll see some of my photos where I'm been teaching on the street, right on the street, you know. Uh, and I'll, I'll teach them now uh, about the basic uh, uh, photography, uh, now uh, uh, about wide angle, about, about the portraits and all. And then we start taking for photos. I, 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 I see myself, you know, continuing with the same role. Uh, I believe that uh, social media is going to be a, a huge platform for the, for the deaf, for the disabled to reach out. They have been, uh, uh, I, 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 I have less finance to, you know, have a place of my own. I would, I would definitely like to have a place because a lot of parents comes to me and says that they want to send the children to you, to me, to, uh, for taking classes. 
this is where is where is the disadvantage is that i don't have a place i can't call everybody at my home also same time they are very small also uh, as far as outdoor uh, it, it's not a daily affair you know you, lot of planning goes into uh, outdoor also so these are the minus point uh, but, uh, but given the circumstances i try to do what what is best uh, you know and uh, as of today i have uh, i have imparted uh, 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 teaching to more than thousands of uh, students all over india uh and uh, besides uh, cancer kit we are disabled i have also uh, taken classes for almost one and a half years in dharavi you might have heard about dharavi which is the largest uh, slum area in india uh, not only in india in asia and uh, i have i have taken classes for the underprivileged uh, children then i have taken uh, i have uh, taught photography to the autism also because i believe uh, you know autistic children are very you know very special case because their thinking process is not in words it is in pictures mm -hmm. i believe they uh, photography and creativity is going to be quite helpful to them so you know if i had to reach out to all this autism everything and all basically what is lacking is funds you know i don't have i don't have the funds i don't have the resources i neither i have the place also so as far as my future uh, 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 activities is concerned there is a limitation i will try to take the help of technology in which is zoom is there where i believe i can take classes uh, we need not go to uh, you know i i i need not even have a place i can teach uh, from my home to all the kids so zoom is going to be quite helpful and we are working on it right now i have already installed it and i am seeing that some of the student uh, the deaf student uh, because uh, you know they are a little bit adult so they are much more uh, conversant with all the technology so in maybe very shortly i'll be taking classes through zoom so i believe that's going to be a very big thing great and and of course zoom allows you to have subtitles or captions yes so yes, yes so um i i think the 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 other thing that i'm interested in is that your teaching people to take photographs are you teaching them how to edit photos as well no no uh, no i i myself is not good in editing okay and uh, i i i i am not a big believer in uh, editing uh, you know i i i do editing of my photos only for brightness uh, exposure little bit nothing more i don't like to really manipulate uh, too much into the photos i don't uh, encourage my student also i say that what what is there in the mind you try to capture your mind and try to keep it as it is wherever you believe that light is less you can do a little bit of uh, brightness and all uh, rather than uh, uh, you know then we, we we talk about digital photographies i am really not into digital photography i am not a big fan of digital photography so what cameras are you using I am using uh, I I've got a Nikon DSLR uh, D90 which is a old model and then I have got D70 uh, DSLR Nikon uh, 70 which is much older model than uh, D90 then uh, recently I was gifted a, a, a Canon DSLR camera by somebody from Twitter you know he saw my work and he said that he can he wants to buy a camera for me to uh, you know use it for my kid uh, so I I have that and then i have my iphone also which i'm using for street photography okay i'm also i'm also encouraging my student to get into self photography also because i believe that's going to be the future because uh, you see i mean none of the student would be able to afford to buy a dslr and uh, same time i don't want the kids to go to the parents and uh, trouble them to buy a camera because then parents will come to me and make a complaint also so what i said is that uh, yeah yeah Uh, you know, uh, all poor. Uh, you know, basically, ninety nine percent of my kids are all from the poor people, poor yeah. families. Well. Yeah. So I tell them is that if you don't have a camera, don't worry about it. You can learn quite a lot from uh, iPhone. You can learn quite a learn. You can learn quite a lot from cell phones, ordinary cell phone, smartphone. Because the advantage of smartphone is that it can give you a photo which is almost as good as a DSLR. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan of mobile photography. Yes, yes. I I I, 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 I do all my street photography from my iPhone. Yeah. I don't so, use my DSLR. No. Um. I think it was David Bailey who, I, I'm going to be wrong here, that said the best camera is the one that you have with you. Yeah, the right. mobile phone is always with mobile you. Mobile phone. Yes, yes, yes. Um. What you can also get for mobile phones is. 
clip-on lenses. So, um, so I have this case here. Okay. Which cost, uh, which is not expensive. It cost me, I think, about ten pounds. Oh. Right. Uh, so this is this is my uh, macro lenses and telephoto. <laughs> made in China, like everything is made in China. Right? But uh, um, but that enables me to get close-ups of uh, of all sorts of things, and you can slide the the lenses. Oh, over. Really good, good, good. Um, you, you have a lot of kits. Uh, so you carry uh, quite a lot of uh, along with your cell phone. You have to carry all these things in your pocket. Well, uh, I. I don't carry it around all the time, but um, if I know that I'm going somewhere, if, or um, and I want to take photos, I like I like taking photos of flowers and plants and stuff. That's my thing. Um, but then I'll go and I'll, I'll take my case with me. But otherwise, I just just my cell phone. Not that I can go anywhere other than my garden at the moment. So it's only going to be plant photos. Right. But, um, I'm just. Um, wanted to connect you to another former Access Chat guest, uh, which is Felipe from NOS Why Not, because he's set up an agency for uh, photographers with disabilities, which I think I, I, I have made the connection. But I think that, that, that he's actively um, marketing the, the photos from his, from his agency, and maybe there's an opportunity for your students to be able to make money and, and be self-supporting through agencies like that. Yeah, that's great. That's a great, great initiative that is. Yeah. Excellent. So um, thank you very much for, for, for coming and, and talking with us today. It's been really great to hear about all of the work that you're doing and what we're going to do is you know, welcome you on Twitter on, on Tuesday. So thank you very much for, for, for sharing with us because uh, it's really fascinating to see what you're doing in a different part of the world. I'd also want to thank uh, Barclays Access, MyClearText and uh, Microlink for helping us stay on air um, and, and continue to spread the word about all of the great inclusion initiatives around the world. Thanks for calling me over. It was great talking to all of you and uh, hope we'll have more many such chat in future also. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you for your work. I unmuted. I guess I can unmute. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Thank you.